Hello, everyone. Welcome to Technologies Discussion Channel. Today, I'd like to continue the discussion on antenna. This video, I'm going to focus on the parameters of antenna. Under these parameters of antenna, I'm going to concentrate on beam width. There are actually two ways to describe a beam width. The first one is actually known as half power beam width, which is denoted as HPBW. Another one is actually the first now beam width, which is denoted as FMBW. This video, I'm going to explain and highlight the key difference between these two. This will be the part six series discussion on antenna. So guys, if you're keen to know more about antenna, please take a look on the playlist under the description. Over there, you will be able to find a series of discussion on antenna. This is my email. If you have any question regards on this discussion, please drop me an email. Okay, or if not, if you want to have a faster response, you are always welcome to ask your question through the comment. Okay, before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to help this channel by like this video. For those who are new to this channel, please consider to subscribe and turn on your notification bell. Once again, thank you so much for your strong support. Okay, so this is what I have been showing on the discussion on the parameters of antenna. We have done the radiation pattern. We have also done the gain. We understand okay, what is antenna directivity, which antenna has a better directivity. This video, I'm going to discuss on beam width. So this video, the objective is to understand okay, what is beam width. Antenna beam width is the angular span of the main loop of the antenna radiation pattern represent the region where most of the power is radiated. Okay, so over here you can see that this is actually we call the main loop. Okay, because this is actually most of the power. Okay, actually are all situation over here. Okay, so what is actually the angular span? This is actually the angular span. So in short, this is the antenna beam width. Okay, basically the angle that is actually used to so-called describe the beam width. The beam width is measured in degree. Okay, so basically this term is actually in degree and can be specified in either the horizontal or vertical plane. For antenna, okay, basically you have two types of polarization, horizontal polarization and vertical polarization. And therefore, okay, you can actually describe this beam width in either horizontal or vertical plane. The beam width of an antenna is an important parameter because it determines the directivity and also the coverage of the antenna. Okay, so this is important. Okay, mainly you can see how does the antenna actually release the energy into the environment. And let's say for this case here, if we need to have a directivity antenna, then this is a very important parameter to discuss. Being with, after that, you will realize that they actually will also help to determine the directivity. A narrow beam width indicates a highly direction antenna. It means sense, right? The narrow means that this is much smaller. So once it becomes much smaller, it becomes higher directivity, which means that they actually pinpoint okay, even more intense. So basically, this is what it means. And because of this case, this is actually more suitable for long range. As you can see from here, this is basically a very narrow beam width. And from here, you can know that this kind of narrow beam width, you are going to have high gain. Once you have high gain also, when this antenna is very narrow, you can also realize that they are actually so-called called a higher directivity antenna, which means that this antenna with this beam width, they actually is more directive as compared to the other two. So basically, this is what it means. Okay, so while a wider beam width, okay, so basically let's say this wider beam width, okay, basically they will be more suitable for short range communication, okay, because the gain is lower and hence mainly is only for short range communication. However, okay, it can cover a wider area. Okay, you can also imagine that this actually they can cover a larger place. So therefore, based on different needs, 
okay, you can actually design the beam width. For example, if you want to go for long range, then you need to design a very narrow beam width in order to have high gain, and therefore we can actually travel a longer range. However, okay, if you want to serve more clients, okay, so therefore you want to have a beam width that is so-called wide. Once you have a wide beam width, the gain will be low, and therefore, however, you can actually serve a larger audience as you can see from here. Okay, each antenna has a specific beam width antenna, so beam width pattern. Okay, but this pattern is not constant across all frequency. Okay, in this diagram here, you can see that basically this is actually for the 902 megahertz. This is actually for 915 megahertz, and this is 928 megahertz. Okay, so over here, you can see that the pattern is actually not consistent, which means that different frequency may have different beam width pattern. So basically, this is what it means. Okay, so therefore, for this case here, okay, the antenna basically beam width pattern may not be consistent okay, because of the different frequency. So over here, okay, I think it's quite clear. The frequency actually contributes to the different of the beam width pattern. Okay, therefore, it is important to consider the frequency of operation when testing to account for beam width difference. Okay, so in short, okay, the higher the frequency, when we actually have a high frequency, we actually have a smaller wavelength. And once we have a smaller wavelength, okay, basically, you can imagine that we are going to have a narrow beam width. And hence, because of the narrow beam width, we are going to have a higher gain, and actually the antenna will be more directive. Okay, the divergence of the beam is related to the frequency by a formula can make it very easy to account for this effect. Okay, so basically we are going to take this, maybe not this video, but on the future video. Okay, beam width is commonly measured as the angle between two points on either side of the main loop, also known as the half power point. Okay, so basically later on, okay, I will emphasize, but in short, as I mentioned earlier on, this beam width can be described by either the half power beam width or first now beam width. Okay, so let's take a close look okay, in this diagram here. So over here, you can see that this is actually the half power beam width, okay, which is quite clear here. Okay, the term of this half power beam width, let me explain. Okay, so this half power beam width, okay, basically this is the most common way to express beam width. Okay, it actually measures the width of the main loop at the point where the power is half or minus 3 dB. Okay, so basically this is actually the peak power. Okay, when the power reduced by half, which is also 3 dB, and on the end of these two here, you actually draw a line, and basically this angle here is actually called a beam width for this half power beam width. So this is what it means here. Okay, it can be expressed in degree and can be found in both the horizontal and vertical plane, which I have illustrated early on. So basically, in short, for this half power beam width, okay, basically the power actually reduced into half over here. And once you have this half power here, you can extend out this line, and this angle will be so-called the beam width for half power. Next, what is the first now beam width? Okay, it is the angle between the first now adjacent to the main loop where the power is zero. Okay, so over here you can see that this is actually the main loop. Okay, so these are all the side loop. Basically, the first so-called zero point. Okay, you draw the line. So this is what we call the first now beam width. Okay, I think the next slide will be more clear, but at this moment you just imagine that this so-called minor loop actually touch the main loop, okay, basically at the now, okay, which means that at zero, basically you draw a line. So this is what we call the first now beam width, okay, which is illustrated here. Okay, the first now beam width is a very important parameter for antenna design, okay, because it actually determines the antenna's ability to reject signal or interference from unwanted direction. Okay, so in short, you imagine this, this first now being with, if we open a larger, so-called larger angle, then you will bounce to have more interference. Can you imagine? Because now I receive actually a wider range here. So therefore, you can also imagine that I'm going to have more interference. 
And basically, this is what it means. Okay, this is determined. Okay, whether this first now being we can use to use to reject the signal or or any form of interference from any unwanted direction. Okay, a narrow FMBW first now being we indicate better ability to reject signal from unwanted direction. So in short, if let's say I'm going to have a very narrow first now being we then okay, we are actually able to reject most of the signal because you can imagine, okay, basically they are very concentrated and they are very high directivity. Okay, while a wider FMBW indicate a lower ability to reject signal interference from unwanted direction, which I have highlighted over here. Okay, so this is what I mentioned early on. Okay, so maybe for this diagram here, it's not so clear, but in this diagram here, let me quickly okay, describe about this FNBW, first now been with. Okay, firstly, draw the tangent on both sides from the origin of the radiation pattern, okay, which is tangent to the main loop. Okay, the angle between these two tangent is known as the first now been with. Okay, so in short, this is actually the so-called the main loop. The first now, which means that the first zero, this is what we call the FMBW, first now been with. Okay, I think this diagram is quite clear. Basically, the first zero point. Okay, so basically this part here, we will know this part here as FMBW, first now been with. Okay, so basically this is what is on been with. Okay, before I continue, okay, guys, I really need your help. So when more of you guys actually help to press the like button, this video will have a higher chances to reach out to a larger audience. So guys, help me by press the like button now. For those who have learned something from this video, please consider to subscribe and turn on your notification bell. Once again, I really appreciate your effort. Okay, let's quickly understand the relationship between being with and gain. Okay, in fact, these two are really different. Okay, but over here, you will see the difference. Okay, antenna being with and gain have an inverse relationship. Okay, inverse relationship means that being with increase, the gain reduce. Okay, when the being with reduce, the gain actually increase. So basically, this is the meaning of inverse relationship. Okay, decreasing the being with, having a narrow being with will result in a higher gain. This is because with a narrow being with, power transfer is increased in a particular direction. In short, okay, if you're going to have a very narrow being with, then therefore, all the power can be concentrated over there. And hence, because of this, we call this higher directive, higher gain. Okay, what is the relationship between signal to noise and beam width? Okay, so as beam width is closely related to directivity and gain, changes in beam width also cause proportional change in both of these parameters. In short, okay, beam width is going to affect directivity and also gain, as I have illustrated earlier on. For a very narrow beam width antenna, okay, the gain and directivity are higher. Okay, so basically, I have explained this, okay, which means that they actually increase the signal-to-noise ratio. Okay, what is SNR, okay, which is signal over noise? We are always desired to have a large signal and low noise. And therefore, this SNR, we need it to be as big as possible. When this number SNR is big, which means that the signal is very strong, and the noise is very small. So hence, this is actually under the desired effect. We want this SNR to be as big as possible. Okay, so the SNR is the ratio of signal strength to unwanted interference. And in short, higher SNR actually is the most desired, okay, which means that we want to have a SNR as high as possible. Okay, being with actually also help to describe how does the signal actually radiate from an antenna. And as I mentioned again, this is possible. Okay, I can describe the being with either in horizontal and also vertical. Okay, for example, let me quote you an example. Okay, I hope you understand what is OMI direction antenna. I have discussed this. So if you have forgotten what is actually OMI direction antenna, okay, please take a look on the video on the playlist. Basically, they radiate the signal 360 degree horizontally. Okay, imagine this is an antenna. Okay, so this is what we call a horizontal plane. As you can see from here, the signal actually released in a horizontal plane. 
Okay, it actually depends on the model. Okay, it, it might have as much as coverage as 75 degree vertical, okay, which means that they actually concentrate at a vertical end of 75 degree. Okay, as such, it does not radiate its signal in a complete spear. Okay, complete spear okay, will be known as isotropic, okay, which means that all the power will be equal at whatever point if let's say the distance remain constant. Okay, so basically this is more like a donut shape, which I have described on my previous discussion. Okay, antenna beam width is a useful analytics parameters for various practical application. Okay, include okay, we are going to plan okay antenna coverage in a given area. Okay, so therefore if we have some uh planning ahead then we can ensure that the whole area will be covering, for example, for this case here. So hence, okay, basically, we need to have some form of planning okay, in terms of the coverage. Okay, so therefore, from there, we actually use this beam wave okay, to determine the coverage. Determine whether neighboring antenna will interfere with each other. Okay, so basically, this is what I mentioned earlier on. Okay, so if the first now BW beam wave, okay, they become big, then we are going to have more interference However, for this first now BW, okay, if it's very narrow and hence the chances to have interference will also reduce. Okay, we are going to assist in terms of improving the performance of communication link and we are going to developing network mobility, okay, which means that uh, any comms device actually belongs to over here. So with this, I'd like to end my discussion. I hope you understand what is antenna being with now. Once again, Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much, and I hope to see you guys soon. Bye for now. Thank you.